happy Monday. It is my last like hour in North Carolina. I've been here for the past week and it has been absolutely amazing. I originally came home to see my dog. He is fairly old. He's 14 years old and he's finally starting to show signs of like serious aging. I did attempt to have him like move with me to New York um, during like my second year living in New York but it was honestly really really hard between work and like just like being with him all the time because he is a house dog and so I just want to spend as much time with him as I can before that time comes because I'm gonna be it's gonna be really really hard for me so um, I was missing him a lot more so I was like let me come down spend some time with him and then go back to New York. My flight is at six tonight, so I'm about to leave in like the next hour or so. The crazy thing is, I left New York thinking that I would come to North Carolina and I would experience like 80 degree weather here this entire time. But literally, I got to North Carolina and it was like thunderstorms for pretty much the entire week that I've, I was here. And New York had like 60 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees while I was in North Carolina. So I was like, how ironic that the weather just kind of flip-flop like that also another note like i never let my hair grow out this much even my grandma when she saw me like oh are you growing your hair out um because i literally keep it like to the skin so short so i'm excited to get back to new york pamper myself just gonna have a full day cutting my hair doing my nails getting my eyebrows done like the whole nine so i can get back to uh my beautiful self Tuesday. I am officially back in New York. So happy to be here. The sun is shining into my room and I'm just like, oh, I miss the ambiance. <laughs> I woke up around 6 30 this morning. It was so tough for me to get out of bed. Usually when I go home to North Carolina, I am thrown off my health routine. So I'm eating terribly, literally not working out. And my body definitely feels the effects of those decisions and so when I get back to New York or when I come back to my apartment it's always a little bit tougher I'm usually low on energy usually very bloated and just like not feeling my best health wise so this morning my alarm was originally set for 6 I hit snooze and woke up around 6 30 had to force myself to get up stretch because I haven't stretched in like two weeks so I was definitely feeling very very tight did my nails I had a few chipped nails and I cannot stand having like crusty looking nails um, ever since I've learned how to do my own gel manicures like my nails are always done um, so yeah I woke up did my nails now I'm about to head to Trader Joe's to do some grocery shopping it's so funny I went to Trader Joe's once and now I feel like I'm a Trader Joe's girly um, and it's <laughs> I went from not grocery shopping in person at all and ordering all my groceries online uh, to now going shopping in person at Trader Joe's. Happy Wednesday! It's bright and early. I woke up around 6.30 this morning, which is obviously very early for me. I'm not a morning person, um, but I have a casting at 9 a.m. this morning, so I'm actually about to head out into Manhattan for it. I'm really excited because I was a specific request for this casting, so that's usually a good sign, so fingers crossed. I'm trying to stay optimistic for this one. And I actually have a friend in town from college. I literally have not seen him and like four four or five years um but he is here in new york visiting with an agency which is so exciting so i may stop by and see him if my casting finishes before his agency meeting um but hopefully if all goes well with the agency meeting he'll be moving to new york so we'll see fingers crossed for him also <laughs> So 
I'm back home from my casting. It was super quick, but let me tell you guys how silly I am. So when my agent sent me the casting request, they told me like in the little description, like make sure the model is prepared to derobe and like shoot in underwear. I was thinking that the client would provide underwear, which is a silly thing to assume when they're doing like a big casting. That means they would have to give underwear to everyone that comes. And I'm sure they don't, they wouldn't want to waste product on models that may or may not book the job. But this, I wasn't thinking at the time, I was assuming that they would have underwear for me to try on. And so I wore a thong and then I get there and they're like, okay, take your clothes off and just leave on your bra and underwear. Mind you, I left my apartment without a bra because I, I usually don't wear bras. Like I never wear bras. So I left my apartment without a bra and then I start walking to the train and I'm like, you know what? I should probably run back and get a bra. So I run back to my apartment, grab a bra, Thank God I did because when I got there, they were like, okay, take your clothes off and just leave your bra and underwear. So I put on um, a bra that I thought would resemble the brand that I was casting for. And um, I wore a few pieces like from that specific brand, which is a pro tip. If you're going to a casting and you own any items from the client that you are casting for, definitely wear it. So yeah, anyways, wore my bra and underwear, but I was in a thong. All the other, at least the... The female models that I saw there had on like bikini type underwear or boy shorts but not thongs and so I was a little bit uncomfortable but thankfully when I got up to the casting director she was like oh my gosh I'm so happy you wore exactly what we were hoping like the models would wear so like thank you for doing that and I was like oh okay great it worked out in my favor. The best part of the whole casting experience is that when I got to the table in my bra and underwear, one of the casting directors saw my name like on the written on the sheet and he was like, oh my goodness, I found your YouTube channel and at one point I like binge watched all of your videos. And I was like, what? No way. Well, I hope I hope you enjoyed the content. And he was like, yeah, I just ended up binge watching all of your videos. And I was like, that is like so good to hear because I think like I record for you guys and I feel like in my head is such a small community of people because I have the same few of you that comment on all of my videos and I feel like it's just a conversation between us so I think in my mind it is not 3,000 almost 4,000 of you like subscribe to my channel and even more people who aren't subscribed to my channel watching my videos it's just like a small community of people but when random people on the street or at castings tell me that they watch my YouTube videos it makes me it brings me back down to earth like girl your videos are on the internet and accessible to anybody who uses the internet so so many more people than you think are watching your videos and so yeah when he told me that that just made me really excited because that means he's kind of already introduced to my personality um and hopefully he liked my personality on my videos and that transfers over well to actually booking the job. So fingers crossed. I would love to work with this client. I've actually worked with this client before in the past, but it was just for parts. So it would be nice to actually work on a campaign where my face is seen and you can actually recognize who I am. Um, and overall, just like what they stand for and how they contribute to society, I really appreciate. So fingers crossed that I booked the job. But now I'm about to do a self tape. I literally just got sent this request yesterday and they want it submitted by tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock it out right now and then just do some work for the rest of the day. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to make it to the gym, which is annoying. I should have woke up a little bit earlier to go to the gym beforehand, but if not, I do have an event that I'm gonna go to tonight, which I'm super excited about. I don't know if I've mentioned it in a video before, but this really big artist reached out to me a couple of months ago to paint me as a to be one of to be one of his muses. So he is having an exhibition, opening night for his exhibition here in New York tonight um and then it'll be accessible to the public tomorrow uh, but he gave me access to the premiere night so i'm really excited about that and to get a chance to see him again because it's been a few months since we first met i'm gonna go solo because i'm going to challenge myself to go out and network and like force myself to talk to other people that you know talk to strangers so i am gonna go by myself i'm gonna get dinner beforehand and then go to the event so a pretty eventful day, a pretty eventful week, really. I'm really just trying to get out and socialize and just 
be on the go now that it's warm in New York. I feel like my personality can actually shine and come alive. So I'm taking full advantage of the weather. But yeah, I'm rambling. I'm talking too much. I'm going to knock off this self tape and then check in with you guys probably later tonight before the event. Brief intermission because it is so warm outside and I had to come out and lay in the sun. <laughs> it is four o'clock. And it is time for me to start getting ready, but I just want to lay out in the sun for the rest of the day. Like, I don't really feel like going out anywhere, but I already RSVP'd, so I have to go. And honestly, I just feel like I need an entirely new wardrobe, so I'm thinking this weekend I'm going to do like a deep spring cleaning of my wardrobe and just toss everything. My niece is surprisingly now my size. She's actually a little bit bigger than me. She's only... 13 um so i'm gonna give pretty much everything to her and slowly rebuild my wardrobe to the kind of woman that i want to be and the kind of woman that i would like to present to society i guess but just my lack of wardrobe sometimes makes me not even want to go out because i'm just like it's not up to par it's not giving what it's supposed to give but tonight i'm going to just try to throw something together Gonna go to dinner first, do a little solo dinner, and then I'm gonna go to the event. I probably won't stay for too long. It's literally from 7 to 11, and I think that's just like a show up any time between that time kind of thing. So I'm gonna get there earlier, like closer to the start time, and just like check it out, try to mix and mingle, maybe stay for like an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how socially awkward I feel, and then I'm gonna come back home. Quick little outfit check. I feel like it looks so cute. It's giving, I feel like it's giving. <laughs> I do feel like this outfit is giving what it's supposed to give. Um, little makeup, not even really makeup, I have concealer under my eyes. But we are good to go. I feel so, I feel so cute and it's warm outside. Like, it's a good day. <laughs> I took my earrings off so you guys can't even get the full effect of my beauty. Let me put them back on. <gasps> Much better. And let me just say, first things first, before I start ranting to you guys and complaining, I am proud of myself for going to this event alone. I did have a plus one available, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to utilize it. I'm going to go by myself because it would force me to not stick with the same person the entire time. It would allow other people to come up to me because I find that more people approach me when I'm alone as opposed to with other people. And so I was like, this will give me, going solo will give me the opportunity to meet more people. So I did not utilize my plus one. So patting myself on the back for that. All in all, it was a great experience. I'm so proud of Tigran and literally his work just amazes me. For the first time that I saw it, I was blown away and anyone who sees his work has the same reaction. So, um, so nice to see that everything come to fruition. I was introduced to a lot of artists, a lot of digital artists, and I had a couple of people who were kind enough to kind of dive a bit deeper into what NFTs actually are um, and to explain that entire process to me. So I learned, not only did I get to see art, which I love, I was able to learn a lot too. And so just all, all in all, thankful for the experience and I'm so glad that I went. And it made me recognize that I am not taking full advantage of the social aspect of living in New York. New York City is amazing for so many different reasons, but one of the top, probably the top five reasons of living in New York City is the social currency, I guess, who you know. A lot of times that's how people make it in whatever industry they're pursuing. It's because of who they know, who they're connected with, whether you're going to the club, whether you're going to dinner, whether you're going to random art galleries and random events, you never know who you're gonna meet in the city. And I feel like although I'm out and about a lot of times, most of it is just like frivolous activities, like maybe 
going and sitting by the water or going and like running around Prospect Park, but there's not a lot of like, I feel like I'm not going to as many social events as I really could be going to. Most of the time it's because I'm a grandma and I don't like being out like super late at night or because I don't have anyone to go with and some events I'm not comfortable going with by myself. But going out tonight made me realize I need to start taking more advantage of social events in New York, whether or not I have someone to come with me or not. Um, just because again, you never know who you're going to meet, you never know who you're going to see, you never know who's going to see you. And just by being there tonight, I had so many people approach me and tell me how beautiful I was. And even though nothing really came out of those compliments, you never know who those people are that are complimenting you. They could be like, oh my goodness, I saw the most beautiful bald headed black girl at this event. I have to find her Instagram and like introduce you to her or like you just never know who they know. I had a lot of people approach me first tonight which was awesome i think i approached maybe two or three people tonight on my own which i'm very proud of that because initially i was very anxious because there weren't there were only a few people that were there solo um and literally my first five minutes there a girl recruited me to take her photos and then i and then she took photos of me and we talked just for a little bit but she was there solo i met Again, some digital artists, some NFT digital artists. I met a gallery curator. I met a gallery owner. Um, who else did I meet? People from Switzerland, people from London, because it is NFT week here in New York City. People are coming in from all over, so this is like prime time to go out and socialize. There were a couple of people that I did want to talk to that I did not get a chance to talk to because I was twiddling my fingers and like kind of nervous to go up and talk to them and then once I finally got enough courage to talk to them, someone else was already talking to them. So I did encounter that a few times tonight, um, but I need to figure out like just something to say to everyone that I want to approach, like just like a conversation starter. I feel like there was a point in time where I was a conversationalist, but nowadays I feel like I'm not. Even though I went on a date last night. Yeah, oh my god, I went on a date last night. I don't even remember if I told you guys that. But I went on a date last night and he told me that I was a, a conversationalist and he enjoyed the conversation. And when he said that, I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, like, why are you shocked by that? And I'm like, I don't see myself as a conversationalist. I am if... I'm like intrigued by something or if I'm like curious about something but generally speaking if I'm just speaking to a random stranger who I have not who I know nothing about and I'm not really like as curious about anything that they have going on it's harder for me to facilitate the conversation because I'm starting off with a completely blank slate and I don't even know what to say but I feel like a conversationalist regardless of who they're talking to regardless of the environment can make conversation off the fly and I, I guess I'm not as confident in my ability to do that, but other people seem to think that I'm a conversationalist, so I'm just gonna take it. I'm not gonna question it. Maybe I'm doing something right, I don't know. I almost forgot, oh, I almost forgot they gave out little goodie bags too, and I didn't even check what is actually in here, but it does have like Babylon, which is like an NFT group. Something like that. I don't, I don't even really know. I guess I didn't really learn anything tonight, did I? <laughs> this is about to be my bedtime t-shirt. Oh, I need a new one because my, my current bedtime t-shirt has a hole in the neck. So this is going to be my replacement. And it has Babylon on the back. Super cute. Oh yeah, the business card of one of the guys that I talked to tonight. Super cool. He was super cute, but he lives in Switzerland, which... I guess that's not stopping anything, but all right, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Y'all, I low-key forgot I was in the middle of a vlog, <laughs> but um, I've pretty much been working from home today, and um, it's another sunny day in New York. It's like 80-something degrees, so of course I'm going to go outside. I am going to go for a run around Prospect Park. It's been so long since I've done like a long distance run. Most of my cardio during the fall and winter has been like the 12, 3, 30 workout or like an hour on the elliptical or Stairmaster. But as far as like running, it's been a while. And I typically only run long distance during the spring and summer, obviously because it's warmer outside and I prefer 
running outside as opposed to running long distance on the treadmill. So we're gonna see how it goes. The entire Prospect Park loop, I believe, is about three miles. Um, so we're gonna see if I can run the entire three miles without taking a break. Honestly, not putting myself down or anything, but I doubt that I'm gonna be able to do that, especially considering I just came back from North Carolina where I was eating complete garbage and not working out for like those, like that week that I was there. Update you guys. I made it a mile and a half before stopping to walk. Now my skin looks gray because of my sunscreen. <laughs> Guess I gotta switch to Super Goop. Super Goop's unseen sunscreen because this just has me looking ashy. I feel like everyone has switched from running to biking. There aren't as many runners out here, but there are way more bikers than at least what I remember last season. I'm gonna walk a little while longer and then back to the grind. I feel so cute. I wish you guys could see my entire outfit, but I'm actually in a rush. I was sitting there like getting ready with my friend on FaceTime and basically lollygagging and I didn't even realize what time it was. I literally have three minutes to leave my house and get to the train station to get to the Bumble I don't even know if I told you guys where I'm going. I'm going to another Bumble in real life event and they're only admitting the first 100 people. So I want to make sure that I get there at least a little bit early so I could be within that first 100 group. Normally when I go to these events, there aren't a lot of people that go that get there like super early. Um, so I've usually had success, but I feel like now that more people are learning about it and it's a really pretty day in New York, more people are probably going to show up. So I just don't want to risk it. So I'm about to leave right now and I will get some behind the scenes with you guys and then do like a total event breakdown once I get back. But yeah, I gotta go. I'm in a rush. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm so tired of swiping on the dating apps. Thankfully, Bumble hosts events around major cities to give users the chance to meet in real life. I've gone to their happy hours and free roller skating, but today I went to Arctic House for a night of art after dark. We all got checked in with a wristband, name tag, and one drink ticket. I went straight to the bar to ease my nerves, but I don't drink, so I got a mocktail. Some people came solo, like me, and others came with a friend. I quickly spotted two gorgeous girls taking photos, and they offered to take mine too. I ended up talking to like six people at this event and exchanged numbers with two. So as an introvert, I definitely see this as a success. So thanks, Bumble. All right, guys, now I am heading to Little Island to watch the sunset. This has literally been the perfect day. I'm obsessed with New York in the spring and summertime. If you've never been to New York, definitely come in the spring and summer. It's the best time. Debate your mama, I don't care. When I tell you guys, my room is a literal disaster because I haven't switched out my wardrobe to spring, summer yet. And so I had to like, basically destroy my room to try to find like a summer outfit because it was 86 freaking degrees today in New York. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna film in the corner that I always film in because I can't have you guys seeing the rest of my room. But anyways, I just got back and I had a really good day today. I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good. I'm just proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. For a while, um, I'm used to doing things alone but for a while i was doing things alone with no intention of seeking companionship no intention of seeking friendship no intention of meeting new people in general i was just doing my own thing and like in my own little bubble but this week i really have put myself out there and have shown up at events with the intention of meeting other people having a conversation with other people and maybe leaving with a few contacts so the bumble event today was not as packed as it usually as the events typically are they only let 100 people in maybe a little bit over 100 um because i think they let a few more people in at the end um but usually at these events there's always a higher number of women at these events than men and at this one in particular there weren't really there wasn't really anyone that i was attracted to at this event so it was kind of hard to go into it with the intention of like finding a like potential mate potential suitor <laughs> 
so I just ended up talking to random people like when I first got there I met these two girls and they took my photos and videos and then I met these two older women and we talked about dating apps and like their experience on dating apps um, and it was nice to have like a different perspective from someone who is much older than me and has been in the game way longer than me. Um, it was a little bit disheartening, the fact that they were still on the dating apps at that age. But then again, everyone's journey is different and I don't know whether or not they were intentionally seeking like long-term romantic partners for the majority of their life. They probably, maybe they were not. Um, but it was, again, it was nice to get that perspective and to learn a little bit from them um, and to know that they are still like living their best lives and having a good time despite not having a, I guess despite not having a relationship so that was nice to see and hear and um, one of the women her daughter is actually my age and she works in the fashion industry and she's working with a designer so her mom got my contact information yeah you just never know who you will meet at these things and that's why I'm really gonna go hard this spring and summer with just going to every freaking social event that I can get into and yeah I just felt really good I'm telling you guys once the sun comes out in New York it is a totally different vibe like I'm not depressed, but I literally feel the depression leaving my body once that temperature hits like 80 degrees. I'm outside, like, I don't even have to have anything to do. I'm just gonna go outside just for the fun of it. You guys can see, like, my energy, my energy is up. I'm feeling good. Hey guys, happy Friday. Uh, a little side note, I don't know if anyone else records with the Sony ZV-1. It is supposed to be the most recommended vlogging camera, like, on the market, but for my dark skinned women, or I don't know if people that are not dark have this same issue, the color correcting is awful. Literally, if you guys watch my videos, I'm like 15 different shades just because the auto adjusting for light is just so inaccurate. Um, and I was talking to a few other um, dark skin creators and they have the same issue with the Sony ZV-1. So I think I may switch to the Canon... Um, I think it's G7X or something like that. I think I may switch just because I've tried to learn the mechanics of the Sony ZV-1 so that it does color correct my skin correctly, but it just, it always changes depending on like if I'm in direct sunlight, if I'm in the shadow, if the light changes just the slightest bit, it just changes my complexion completely and it's very, very annoying. So yeah, if you guys see the quality of my videos change drastically over the course of the next few videos, it's because I switched to a Canon. <laughs> I feel like this has been the longest but most enjoyable week. The sunshine, the weather in New York has literally just increased my mood by like a thousand percent. I just love seeing people outside playing music. You know it is spring, summertime when they bring the four-wheelers out and they start popping wheelies in the middle of the street, doing all that stuff, being extra. But it is so much fun. So it's a like another 86 degree day so i am about to head out and walk all the way to dumbo brooklyn it's about an hour and a half away from me but i figure it's a beautiful day why not do my first hot girl walk of the season it's friday so you know what that means it's friday night fitness with my agency wilhelmina models and we are going to be doing a hot yoga class i believe yeah a hot yoga class at um the lifetime location in Dumbo. So I could have taken the train. The train would have took me like 40 minutes to get there. But I figured it's such a beautiful day. Might as well walk, sightsee. Um, I've never walked to Dumbo before. So I don't even know what I'll be passing along the way. It'll be a learning experience for, for me. I've walked from my neighborhood all the way to Manhattan before just via the Brooklyn Bridge. and Or is that Manhattan Bridge? Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge. I think it was the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know. Some, I'm sure someone's gonna correct me in the comments, but I've walked to Manhattan via a bridge before and it took me about three hours to do it. So I'm gonna walk to Dumbo today. I'm definitely gonna take the train back because I already know I'm gonna be hurting. I'm actually really, really sore from my four mile run yesterday. Um, just because my body is not used to running long distance, especially on terrain that is not just a flat surface like a treadmill. Class starts at 7. They want us to get there by 6.45 to uh, give us a chance to mix and mingle before the class starts. Um, and then, yeah, that's all I'm going to do today. I'm not going out tonight. I feel like I've been going out 
a lot this week or I guess a lot than what I'm used to in the fall and winter but I have to finish editing some videos I have to edit TikToks and a YouTube video that's supposed to come out on Sunday so I'm gonna make sure I get all that done tonight because I have a photo shoot tomorrow morning that I have to wake up early for so I want to make sure that I'm not like exhausted and looking crusty so I want to try to get that done by at least midnight tonight so as soon as I finish the workout class I'm coming straight back home and jumping right into work mode so I'll probably check in with you guys tomorrow Cheers to the first hot girl walk of the season. Come with me to walk five miles to Dumbo, Brooklyn. Even though we throw jokes around about it, seasonal affective disorder is real. And it's crazy to think about just how drastically the sun impacts my mood personally. I'm talking zero to 100 real quick. This 85 degree weather in New York literally had me skipping and cheesing down the block. The city really comes alive in the spring and summer. I'm talking outdoor dining, biking, picnics, block parties, the whole nine. I love this for us. And you want to flip it, you want to flip it, that's the top, yeah. Perfect. And then you could wrap that around your back, yeah. So the water's hidden. <laughs> I just got back to my apartment. I had to get myself together, but I just got back to my apartment. Um, it is 418. I have been out pretty much all day. And I'm exhausted and a big part of why I feel so exhausted is because I literally ate trash today this morning I had for breakfast fruit loops with the marshmallows then before I even got to the studio I got a bagel with butter and jelly not healthy then after the photo shoot I needed to go shopping to pull some outfits for my photo shoot this upcoming week but I was hungry so I stopped and got a pretzel from Auntie Anne's. Literally no nutritional value in anything that I've eaten today and that is why I feel like disgusting. Anyways, the photo shoot went well. I shoot with a lot of photographers and I would say like 90% of the photographers that I shoot with never give me criticism or like constructive criticism or feedback unless I ask for it. Um, and even when I do ask if they have any feedback, they're always like, no, like, you're so amazing. Like, you did great. Like, just hyping me up, gassing me up. And so in my head, I'm thinking I'm performing well because no one is telling me any different. And it doesn't leave a lot of room for growth. At today's shoot, I shot with a photographer named David. Um, I shot with him maybe like two years ago. It's been a long time since we had been able to reconnect. But finally, we got together on today's shoot. And... The reason I love shooting with David is because he always gives me constructive criticism. He always gives me direction. And as someone who's not used to that, I'm used to just like flowing on my own and just like doing whatever. And the photographer is like eating it up. But in this case, David was giving me constructive criticism, which I love. But because I'm not as used to it, it made me feel like I was doing a bad job, even though I wasn't. Um, but because he was giving me feedback that I wasn't used to it, I like tricked myself into thinking, oh my God, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing a good job. He has to critique me here. He has to correct me here. He has to tell me, he has to give me direction. That means I'm not doing my job. And so these, this, I was basically like negative self-talk, not logical at all because he wasn't giving me this feedback and this criticism and this direction to tell me that I was doing a bad job. He was doing it to make sure I got the best shot, you know? Yeah, it's just something that I'm not used to, but something that I appreciate so much because I'm always seeking that, that I hate to say criticism because it sounds negative, but I'm always seeking that feedback, that corrective feedback so that I can implement it in my next shoot and just continue to grow 
and be better as a model. And I can't wait for you guys to see the video and the images. They were absolutely beautiful. And right now I'm in a phase in my career where I definitely need to be shooting more beauty content because a lot of my portfolio is now commercial and editorial and I definitely want to get more beauty in there because I do think I have a face for beauty and be trying to get a campaign okay I'm speaking a campaign into existence I went straight to Zara afterwards and I did not vlog that because honestly my energy levels were just down um, I wanted to save my battery on my phone and I was kind of just in a rush I wanted to get back to my apartment before it started raining because it's getting dark now so I think it may start raining like for the rest of the night. Picked up some things for my shoot next week. I was going to show you guys what I got, but I think I'm just going to hold off until the next vlog because you're going to be seeing all the outfits in the next video anyway, so I don't want to give any spoilers. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this vlog. I've got to edit a vlog that's supposed to be coming out tomorrow, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to make it. It might be like a Monday type thing, but <laughs> we shall see. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!